What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. Okay, so moving right along, this is kind of an extension of my previous video that I covered where we talked about using instrument plus effects presets as opposed to regular presets. Now I want to take a look at kind of an extension of that, which is using music loops. So for example, we're looking at the exact same file that I used in my previous video. Now, if you have basic patterns, so in certain genres, you may have like EDM, there's always going to be a four on the floor, that type of thing that works in a specific genre that you're producing for or writing in, then it really makes sense to take advantage of the music loop format. So I have this instrument part that's been created and we've set up our multi-out setup in the actual virtual instrument itself. We've enabled all the multi-outs. I've set up my gain staging. I've set up the multi-outs in Easy Drummer's Mixer. In addition, we've got some plugins loaded in terms of some processing. And I've also named all of the channels so that they have a custom name. When working with music loops, music loops is a really, really useful format because it stores so much information. So in my browser, I'm just going to click this instrument part. We're going to drag it over and you can see by default, we have a little X next to the music loop. If I hold alter option, we can change that to basic MIDI, but let's use music loop. Now I'm going to let go and it's going to export a music loop. Now, if I select this music loop, right click and show package contents, we can show exactly what's included in this particular file. So in this case, you'll note that we have the preset or the effects chain for each one of these channels in the console. So we can see this by name. So we have our com drum compression, we have our drum ambience, we have our hats, we have our kick, we have our overheads, etc., etc. In addition to that, it also loads the preset that was used for the virtual instrument. In addition, it creates a flak part, which can be used as an audio file preview. Worth noting too, that this can just be dragged into your song and you can just use this as straight audio. We also have a part.mid file and a part.music file, which is Studio One's proprietary version of MIDI files. So tons of information that's included. Let's move over. We have another song over here. And in this case, I wanna to go to my files tab. Now let's drag this music loop into the arrange window. So I've dragged this in and check out what happens. So we have all the information that was basically stored as an instrument plus effects preset. All of that information was retained. So we have all of the multi-channel outs that we created. We have the custom names. We have all of the plugins. And in addition to that, we also have the instrument part that was created, which of course can then be further edited. So music loops, if you're creating certain types of patterns that are used in the genre of music that you're working in, and you're working with presets and virtual instruments, and you need to do things like this, a music loop is a great option to be able to use. And it's also worth mentioning that if you wanted to, for example, just load a specific part of this music loop, you know that we can right click and show the package contents, then I could say, hey, you know, I really, really liked the effects chain that I used on my kick track in this music loop. We could just come into this music loop and you could simply drag this and then this will replace anything that you have. So. So a lot of different options in terms of using music loops to enhance your productivity and streamline things when producing or writing in Studio One. Such a useful format. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.